Okay, folks, welcome to Fishing Lake Country. Hey, today we're going to make a dual color, a laminated color, and it's called Wally. I uh, named it after Wally Coyote because I sent him some. I made these baits playing around one day. I didn't make but like 50 of them. And uh, so anyway, I fished with him some and caught a few fish on them. Water here was pretty dirty then. And he, he uh, I contacted him if he wanted some baits to use on his channel just to try to help myself some. So I sent him some and I wrote on the package, test color. He emailed me, emailed me back about two weeks later. He said, Bam! Them baits were good. I caught a bunch of fish on those on those baits and some big ones. And then, uh, cause I seen the video he did and he caught a minute, you know, later on he loaded the video. He said, can I get some more of them? I said, I don't have any more. So, I named him Wally cause he done so well with them. If y'all hear a loud noise, like a bam, a, a, it's raining. I got a metal roof in my garage. And there's acorn trees, acorns are falling. This is fall. They're falling a lot, big acorns this year. And when they hit this 10, it almost sounds like a 22 rifle going off. So when you hear something like that, somebody's not shooting at me, it's just uh, acorns hitting the tin roof. And uh, in this building, uh, there's, no, there's nothing, the tin's right on top of the rafters. I can look up and see the purlins and the tin, okay? It's just a shed, shed building, you know how that is. You've been in them. So it's pretty, really noise. There's no insulation or nothing to stop the noise. No tin up between, I mean, no plywood, nothing like that between the tin and the building. So it's, it's noisy. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we need two cups this time. We gotta heat both of them to 350. <clears throat> and then we gotta get both of them back up to 330. Dual colors, dynamic colors can be a pain. But let's get started. We're gonna cook it now, okay? Be right back with you. All right, guys, we got the first one out. I put both of them at the same time, and one of them is a lot hotter than the other one. One of them was 280, and this one was 350. Figure that out. I think it's a placement in the microwave, maybe. So we're gonna make the first one chartreuse. Okay, Wally has a chartreuse top, it's a pearl belly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some counting here now. Okay. Now guys, a disclaimer, I say this a lot. When you buy baits from me, they could be a touch different. One drop difference there can make a difference, right? So sometimes it'll double drop on you're dropping and all of a sudden you get to, whoops. <laughs> or if you miscount. Now, it gets chartreuse flake and the flake changes it. I've got a video on, uh, just one scoop full. I got a video of make and shake the shiners, swim baits. If you haven't seen that video, we start off with pearl, silver, and black. We keep adding colors to it. And I showed you at the end how much it changed the color. All we did was add glitter, guys. We had no coloring after we started. And by the end, they looked like they were a totally different color, didn't they? So if y'all remember that, if you haven't, go back and watch it. See how much difference the glitter changed it? See that? You gotta watch, touch that knife, it'll burn you. <laughs> See how much it changed it? Gave it, gave it, uh, make it made it a little darker, didn't it? All right, let's see if this one's ready. Yeah, I've got a new microwave for y'all that's been watching. Uh, I've had it a week. No, I ain't had it that long. I've had it, uh, I had to go to the doctor for my wellness test, and I went to Walmart, and I was looking around. I've been thinking about buying a used one. I've been looking at Marketplace. And this one was $65, and one's on Marketplace of 50 most of the time, and 45. I said, well, I'm just gonna buy a new one. I bought it because it's not it's 900 watt. My other one was a 700. All right, guys, it's it's 340. I like for it to break 350. It might do okay there, but I'm gonna run it up about 15. Let's go 20 seconds. I've got to get used to this new microwave. 20 seconds is 390. Yeah, I probably didn't need to do about 10 seconds. This it's 900 watt. It's raining hard now, guys. You hear it on that 10 roof. It's a 900 watt. My other one was 700 watts. Huge difference. Huge difference in timing. It's a lot faster, what I I love. I love that. I just gotta get used to it. All right, now this is just pearl powder. I know a lot of y'all make baits because you make comments about it. You're not copying my colors, are you? <laughs> All right. So I ain't gonna tell you how much I'm putting in there because y'all just copying my colors. Guys, you know, 
people copy everybody online. That's why I have a custom shop. And uh, that's why I started this business. It's all because of Chuck. Chuck Elder. He ain't been watching lately. Uh, I see him once in a while. But he sent me some baits to fish with. And I tore the crappie up with them. I couldn't believe how fast the crappie was hitting them. I'm going to give just a touch more than... This is 008. Really fine stuff. It's almost empty. But I got a brand new can to store it. <laughs> when you start getting low, guys, you can sit down at what's on this order, what you need. You can't run out. No, that'd, that'd be, that wouldn't be good at all, would it? All right. Now, this is going to be the, the pearl, the pearl uh, belly. All right. It's going to be, uh, it's shiny. I'm actually going to add a touch more powder. Now, what I'm doing when I do this is I'm looking how thick it is, and I'm looking if I got the color I want. And I think it needs a touch more. All right. Now, I measured it from my recipe back there. A third of a scoop is what it said. But I could have a touch more plastic. I might not got quite a third of a scoop. So that's why I'm saying they can differ a little bit. Now, I like that better. So it's got, it got a little thicker in the white. See that see that shine? Yeah, we want we want them to see this bait. When it comes down through the water, we want them to see it. But I'm fishing water visibility that's two and a half foot, guys, and I had no problem catching fish with this color. Now, here's the here's the part about shooting dual colors that's a pain. They gotta be close to the same color. So here, let's check it. Oh, I can tell you already stirring this one. This done got too cold. I can't even shoot it. See, it's, it's 60 degrees today, guys. I don't have no heat going on in here. I got a heater, but I don't have it on. So it's down to 294. So it's got to go way up. All right, this is down. This is 325. All right. So this is the hard part. Getting both of these the same temperature. So now I'm going to run this one up. I'm going to run it 25 seconds because it's got to be a little hotter. So this, while it's cooling, while this is going up. When I get both these the same temperature, I'm going to move y'all over to the right and we're going to shoot. Okay, folks. <laughs> hey, I've been funny with y'all. I think I finally got them both the same temperature. Hardest part. That's why nobody likes to shoot dual injection. Uh, or I let me say it another way. That's that's the hardest part about dual injection is getting both of them the same uh, color when you're doing laminations. And I watch these guys on YouTube do three at a time. I I, I can't imagine that. But. Doing two at a time is enough problems. I just noticed I put one of my bowls in backwards. <laughs> See why I spun it around? That's why I got them marked. All right. Trying to tap them off here a little bit. It gets very hard to tap them off with a dual injector because it's setting up on me. What I'll do, I'll take the cup. I'm gonna block the wind here. I'm not blocking where y'all can't see. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do, there you go, is top them off. You let that thing suck down, you get air. Sometimes the first couple ones will have air pocket and sometimes a lot of them. Now, that was a little hot. That was 340, 335. I like to, I like to be at 2, 325, 330. And it depends on the molds, it varies some, but you get it too hot sometimes, they'll mix. The liquids will match, you won't get that separation. But let's see what happens. We're gonna open them up in here in a minute. And this is what we got. Let's let them cool. One, two, three. All right. Let's see here. I gotta get a stinger. So we can pull out here. Bam. Hey, what do you think of that? It's pearl on one side. And look, shark trees on the other. Bam. Let's get another one here. Open a couple of these. All right, there you go. All right. What do you think? Let me pull one of them off here. Uh 
They pretty, ain't they? Trying to put my hand behind them, guys, so you can see the color better. This is a st this is a stinger also. That side's green in it, so this side will be curled. All right, now this is a tadpole. Tadpole's a big old tall mold. Uh oh, that didn't pour good. That's what I told you. Didn't feel good. The tails didn't fill out. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it just I say, oh, that's wasted. That's even my half of. All that's wasted. Got two good ones. All right. That's what I'm telling you guys. That's the thing about dual injection. If you have a mistake. Now, if this was all solid color, I could throw it back in the pot. We melt it going. Being as it's dual injection, it's wasted. Now, I will melt it down. But it's, the colors will come out to be a light chartreuse. Done been there. And I have fished with it and caught fish with it. And it might that might be in some of the giveaways for Wednesday night. This one done okay. This one done better. And uh, look, this one took mostly pearl. See, it's, it depends on the injector. The rest of them are fine. All right. Yeah, these down here are fine. To the pearl belly. So you got me holding up here. So we got a couple at the top. For some reason, it took more pearl than I did chartreuse. Can y'all see that? All right. That's a nice looking bait, isn't it? All right, guys. Put your dumber down, one through 300. Uh, I'm going to keep shooting here. I still got a half a cup of each. So I'm going to go back to shoot. I probably should get at least one more round out of them. And uh, I'm going to send somebody some. I done made some I fished with. I done, I made the, uh, done the fishing uh, last Friday, last week, which was only a couple few days ago. And uh, the fish liked it. I had you know, done good with them. Uh, so I'm making them right now only in the stinger and the tadpole right now okay appreciate you when we hit 2,000 guys we're gonna do some kind of uh, special giveaway so tell your friends come on subscribe so and get us to 2,000 and we will probably either do a hundred bait giveaway or we might do something special if somebody lives close to me like you know with it close enough to where you might want to come down and do a fishing trip a half a day or something like that we might do something like that who knows uh, we'll have to see who wins and go from there. All right? I'm not going to do like I watched a guy last night. He's giving away two crappy sticks, but he was donated to him from a company he sponsors and was giving them away. So <laughs> then you got to do shipping with those and everything else. Uh, that, yeah. That, that, that I, don't know, I don't know about that. Shipping's tough anyway, isn't it? Appreciate each and every one of you. One through, one, one through 300. My name's Dennis, Fishing Lake Country. See you next time, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, guys. I got a surprise for you. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I caught a fish. <laughs> Y'all didn't think I could catch one, did you? All right, guys. Be honest with you, I done caught about 20 this morning. This is, that's a decent fish. He's about 10 inches. My surprise is this is the Wally color, okay? I call this color Wally in the tadpole. Now, uh, I, I got a video coming up that I'm gonna load here shortly before you see this one of the Wally color in the stinger. I'm making it in the stinger and the, ta and the tadpole right now. Thinking about trying it in the Tweety Bird, but you can see the top half is, is chartreuse it's the sunshine color. That's what it is. Top half of sunshine with 015 chartreuse flakes. They're bigger flakes. At the bottom half is just pearl powder with 008 silver flakes, and it's a bunch of them. That's why it looks silver looking. I put enough in it to, so it's silver looking, okay? The water has, right now, our water has uh, two and a half foot visibility. I've been playing around, but I dropped my bait down to see how far I can see it and that's that's going to help it it would work in clear water but not crystal clear water if you got visibility four or five feet it might be a little much but i'm gonna say three foot of visibility and less it's gonna be good uh it might even be good if uh, a little just a little stain to the water i'm in the back of a creek y'all can tell it's cool i'm gonna take my shirt off now water 66 
We've had a lot of cool weather. They're stocking up in the back of these creeks after shad, and they're stopping on any cover. Uh, some of the videos I've been making this fall, y'all been seeing, I catch them off of stumps, I catch them off of little brush piles, docks, anything in the back of these coves. Now, I'm in eight foot of water. It seems like as I go back a little further to get shallower, they quit on me. It seems like the eight foot is about as shallow as they want to get right now. Maybe as this water cools, they'll get a little shallower, okay? But right now, that's about it. All right? All right, guys, I went through a spell here where I hooked about four in a row and lost them. So I changed hooks. And sometimes I got to see a couple of fish. They were decent fish. Sometimes they're small fish. Sometimes that's why you're losing them. You're hitting the bites, but so he's not that big. They're just not getting the, oh well, shoot, there it is. Bent my hook too. Um, I straightened my hook some. When you straighten them, when you take a pair of pliers and you bend that hook, you weaken it a little bit. But uh, I didn't realize I'd bent it that much. I'm gonna bend it back. But what I done was some of these hooks, some of them get a little, they're bent down too far like this. And that's why you mess them. But I had a, I had a gold hook on there. Y'all seen what I had on there? I had one of my split shot hooks on there. And I usually have no trouble with those. But after I lost about four in a row with that, I thought, well, I need to do something. So I went to this hook and I had a couple bites and that's the first thing I've caught on it. And I think a lot of it is they're not hitting it hard. They're being a little finicky. There's a lot of shad running around here. And they're probably going like, uh, <laughs> I ain't sure that thing's real. Let's just bite on it one time and see. And I think that's what happens to us a lot of times when we get those little bumps and we don't hook up. They really don't want it. They really, they're checking it out. Uh, some of y'all guys that trout fish, I know my brother's a trout fisherman, and he says, Sometimes a trout will swirl out of bait. People go like, I had a hit. He said, no, he checked it out. That was, he didn't want it. He came up and swirled at it he got, and looked at it, see? He checked it out. That makes sense? When he got to it, he didn't, he didn't want it. He just made a, he made a turn and went back down. That's what the circle, that's what the splash was. It wasn't him smacking at it. It was him retreating back to where he was. So that makes sense to you? And sometimes I think the crappy do the same thing. I think sometimes uh, that's what they do. They come up and they, they bite down on it, or they come up and just bump it. I don't think they even got their mouths open. But I can see them on the live scopes doing that. it would be three or four behind it, and I can feel it going bump, 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 bump. And if you pull it a little bit, there's nothing there. They're either pulling the tail like a sun perch does. And I don't think crappy is that much of pulling the tail because that Tweety Bird, I've lost about two tails the whole time, guys. And I think I knocked some of them off off hitting the docks trying to skip underneath of them. You're right, right? I think some of it's me. But I'm, I maybe had, let's say five, all year, all summer, okay? And this is October, this is almost, guys, this is the end of October that I've lost the tails on. Couple of them the fish, because I had bites and I messed them. Some of them I think is me, because I had fish with them a good wall, and I think I done beat, beat them up trying to cast them, you know, hitting the docks and things like that. But anyway, they could pull them off if they want to, if they treat them, or if they grab them hard enough. So I don't, I don't think they're grabbing the tail. I think, they're, I think they're biting down on the body. They just don't want it. They're not sure they want it. They're checking it. Uh, is it real? You know what I'm saying? Oops, I got a bump right there. Is it real? I think I found another one, guys. Well, I'm not, I did I had to catch a couple live when I was talking to y'all, but I'm not catching one every cast. I catch one every two or three casts. All right, I'm going to move. Oops, that was luck. Look what I've done. I grabbed the line. Remember I told you about grabbing the line? Then I reached down here like this to grab the jig, and I felt the head of the jig hit my hand. Grabbing that line is not a good idea. He's about, he's probably not quite 10. You grab that line and the fish comes off and the jig comes up like that. Yeah, in the side of your hand like that. That happened to me a few times. But anyway, you bet off you bet off grabbing the fish or grabbing the jig head. Yes. Decent one, guys. Now I seen this school. This school was coming down through there, and I threw out in front of the school, and it sank fast enough that they grabbed a hold of it. Bam! What do you think of that? That's a decent one. He knew exactly what to do with that bait, didn't he? He nailed it. Actually, I seen him run, chase it down. Got to see him on the live scope. That's a, that's a hog there, isn't it? 
That's a nice one. Want to see how long he is? Let's see how long he is. Let's take a look at him here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He's almost 14. All right. Nice one. Almost 14. Okay, buddy. Bam. See, that's why I said earlier. I'm catching a few decent fish here lately. Um, not catching a bunch. Catching a decent fish here and there. All right. Let's see if we can find another one. That was on the old tadpole. Bam. All right, guys, I checked all these docks down through here from far as you can see up through there. This is the only one I found crappy on. I seen some bass on the, seen some bass on another one up there, but that's the only one I've seen any crappy on. All right, guys, this, um, this tadpole, one of the things I want to share with you, fish just broke in front of me, is it skips like a dream. So once you hit the water there at the docks, you just went on back through there. Uh, of course, it's got a big body. I'm fighting boat traffic, guys, right now, jet skis and stuff, bass fishermen. <laughs> uh, it, it, it skips good because it's got a big body, and it'll go on back through there. All right? So if you're hunting for a bait to skip docks with, Tweety Bird, the Stinger, and the Tadpole skip the easiest. I got them following me there. They didn't hit me. I'll show you what I found. I don't know how it's coming out, guys. The sun beat me. Quite a, quite a group of them there, but uh, oops, they beat me. I'd probably go to a bug and sit here and slaughter them. <laughs> when, they're, when they're tough like that, the fishing's not easy. They were after a cold front. It was 50, 54 this morning, but we had rain, rain and a cold front. All right, like I said, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with uh, traffic too. Y'all probably can hear it. I cut the camera off. Talking to y'all about the traffic going through. <laughs> and uh, this one hit me. Yeah, and I'm fighting the wake of that. Hey, that beats the wake boats, guys. That beats the wake boats. The wake boats will put me up on that dock when they come by. All right, well, that's what I'm doing. They're right there, back under there, see there? Yeah, that tadpole goes on. Now it's a good sized body, so crappy that size, that crap is probably eight and a half, nine inches. And they'll hit it, but it's two inches long, but it's got a fat body. I could go back to the bug or the Tweety Bird and sit right here and catch at least ten of those, eight or ten of those before they quit on me. Alright? But I'm doing a portal catch with the tadpole, so I gotta stay with it. <laughs> it's not about how many numbers I catch today, it's about catching fish. And they're beating it. I feel them hitting it. <laughs> 